Welcome to At the Public Library, the video source for news and information about the San Francisco Public Library system. Stay tuned for reports on the library's new multimedia presentation, the public hearing schedule for the Library Commission, and the Bridge to Knowledge Walkathon to benefit Project READ, and listings of upcoming library programs for children, teens, and adults at the Public Library. Come to the Lurie Room in the main library each Thursday at noon for a free large screen showing of videos focusing on the voices of poetry. Beginning on September 1st with Festival of Bards, filmed at the 1978 Poetry Festival at Berkeley's Greek Theater. This film captures the spirit of the time as well as some of poetry's heavyweights. Allen Ginsberg, Jessica Hagedorn, Robert Bly, Jana Harris, and more. 80 years old, hair thin and white, cheek bonier than I remembered, head bowed on his neck, eyes open now and then, he listened. I read my father Wordsworth's Intimations of Immortality Ode. Trailing clouds of glory do we come from God, who is our home. That's beautiful, he said, but it's not true. Then on September 8th, Pulitzer Prize winner Gary Snyder reads at the Los Angeles Theater Center and is interviewed by Lewis McAdams. As the cricket's soft autumn hum is to us, so are we to the trees, as are they to the rocks and the hills. Then on September 15th, Whispers on the Wind, LeVar Burton, Ruby D., Cameron Mitchell read from the works of D.H. Lawrence, DeBose Hayward, James Dickey, Tennessee Williams, and Alexander Pope. And each day you sit and peer from behind your veil of emptiness, watching life drift past. You can never remember being a part of life. The emptiness fills your past your present, and stands mockingly in the doorway of your future. On September 22nd, Kay Boyle, the author of more than 30 books, Boyle gives her final performance at the Los Angeles Theater Center. Poets, minor or major, should arrange to remain slender, cling to their skeletons, not batten on provender, not fatten the lean spirit in its isolated cell, its solitary chains. Finally, on September 29th, a quip with Yip and friends. Jack Lemon and Fred Gwynn explore the works of Edgar Yip Harburg, E.E. E. Cummings, Ogden Nash, Dorothy Parker, and Phyllis McGinley. A little secret sinning now and then should not disturb the saintliest of men. But when your life is spent and sun has set, it is easier to repent and to regret. That's the Voices of Poetry, large screen videos in the main library Lurie Room, Thursdays at noon during the month of September. Looking for a great deal on books? Then drop by the Book Bay Bookstore in Fort Mason. Operated by the Friends of the San Francisco Public Library, the Book Bay Bookstore offers great prices on used books, records, and tapes. There's something for everybody at the Book Bay, and all proceeds of the Book Bay benefit the Friends of the San Francisco Public Library. The Book Bay Bookstore is located in the Fort Mason Complex, Building C, on the first floor. The store is open Wednesdays and Fridays from 11 to 5, Thursdays 11 to 8, and Saturdays and Sundays, again, from 11 to 5. The Book Bay also welcomes donations of books. If you have books you'd like to donate, call the Friends of the San Francisco Public Library at 557-4257 for more information. So, now you know, that's Bargain Books at the Book Bay Bookstore, Fort Mason, Building C. Hello, my name is Ed McBride. I'm the Coordinator of Automation, Technology, and Telecommunications 
for the San Francisco Public Library. What we're looking at today is a prototype of the San Francisco Connection Multimedia Workstation. This is a presentation of library collections uh, that uh, have been traditionally shown by appointment in the San Francisco History Room uh, or in some cases have been in storage and not accessible. Uh, we're trying to take these collections and make them accessible through use the multimedia technology. Our partners are Triodyne Software uh, of Sacramento and San Francisco as well as Digital Equipment Corporation of San Francisco. Uh, we as a staff came together and identified uh, collections that we wanted to use this method as a test. There were some criteria. Some of these collections have been in the collection for quite some time, have been processed and cataloged traditionally. Some of these collections have never been seen before. And we wanted a chance to see how we could use the technology to organize and catalog the collections. Uh, there are some very exciting parts of this that we have never been seen before. Uh, and the point being that we want the collections accessible uh, at m multiple sites. Through technology and digitizing these images, we're allowed to have multiple views of the same image at the same time, where traditionally it would take one person or two people seeing a photograph. Uh, we can put this photograph across our network and we can have hundreds of people viewing the same photograph at multiple sites. Uh, so the idea here is to take these, these rare and special collections beyond the walls of the history collection. Uh, the, the system you're looking at, again, I will stress, is a prototype. Uh, we anticipate many revisions of this. Uh, the plan is that this will be available in the history room sometime during the month of August uh, and fully integrated into our system by the time the new main library opens. The new main library will incorporate at least 36 of these workstations as well as the six resource branches in our branch system will have access to the collections on the opening day of the main library. Our plan is to ultimately have these at all library locations. Uh, we do have some partners in the community that is using the technology with us, helping us build the database. One of those partners is the San Francisco Art Commission, where they are putting into the system uh, a slide registry of artists that have uh, placed their collections or their works into the San Francisco Art Commission's uh, gallery on uh, Grove Street, as well as the San Francisco African American Historical Network. They're placing some documents into the collection so that we can see how partnering with outside agencies besides the library can build this product. The product has been designed uh, to use a mouse uh, with uh, an interactive PC uh, and also with sound. Multimedia, by definition, incorporates sound, video, audio, and text uh, into one presentation. Uh, and you'll see as we go through the system how it incorporates all those different media. Also, uh, we have built in an interface that allows us to tap into the online catalog so that the researcher or user uh, could, could look at our traditional catalog, find out what we have to support this in the collection, uh, all from one workstation. Uh, as you're looking at the system now, what you see is kind of an enticing come up, use the system, highlighting what is in the collection or what's in this, this presentation. Uh, and in order to get to the main menu, the mouse is used to click on the menu button. There's also a help screen that anytime you can press and you have text uh, identifying what each button means and how it can be used. The next screen we see is basically a welcome screen. Uh, the background of this screen is the current uh, library logo uh, and it presents uh, six options for us to look at on the system. The first option uh, is the San Francisco History Collection. One of the highlights about this screen is that the background came from a historical map that we have of the city and county of San Francisco. Uh, the text allows you to, uh, to find out more about this collection. Uh, and we have identified two collections that we're highlighting in this presentation. First of all, the History Room, which allows you to get some sort of information about the History Room. You may click and roll text to get information uh, about the room where it's located. And also you can get information about the photo collection, which is a major part of the San Francisco History Room. By pressing the Next uh, button, you see that we have two options for this part of the presentation. Uh, one of those is a Market Street video tour. 
Uh, this is a, a film that was filmed in 1905. It's a trip down Market Street where a camera was actually placed on the front of a cable car uh, and went down Market Street. We click on this presentation uh, and we have some supporting information about Market Street at that time. Uh, we get to see the introduction to this presentation. We can find the chronology of, of the presentation and how it was built. We also get some history about Market Street. Uh, as well as the transportation of that time. Pressing the next, we actually then pull up the video and then again this uh, film has been digitized, it's on the disc uh, and what you will see is the trip down Market Street. Uh, there is text that gives you a history of the film and what most people find in looking at this demonstration is the traffic patterns on Market Street hasn't changed much from 1905 to 1994. This presentation allows us to pause at any time, freeze the frame like you would on a VCR. Uh, it is narrated, highlighting all of the points on uh, Market Street. Right is the Odd Fellows Hall, and the gray building beyond across 8th Street is the Grant Building from 1905. The White Postal Service automobile is at the left center. At the far right, you can see a city water wagon, and road work is underway on the left. As we By pressing the back, we can then back up logically into the presentation. Uh, we can then look at the photo collection. In the photograph collection, we have uh, close to 300,000 plus photographs highlighting San Francisco history. Uh, what you see here, again, is, as I mentioned earlier, the backdrop to one of those maps in that collection. We then get an old map of uh, Market Street, highlighted intersections by letters. Uh, the person using the system can either highlight on the letters or can go actually to an intersection they're interested in. This presentation has been put together so that you could look at the photograph and here we see one of Market at 5th Street. Uh, you can press on the photograph, have it enlarged, see the top part of the photograph, the bottom part of the photograph. This photograph shows that there's a parade going down Market Street at the time. Uh, or we can take a trip around that intersection this happens to be the intersection of Powell, Market, and 4th uh, and 5th. We see here that it's the California Academy of Science building. Here we see the Emporium Department Store in 1905. We see Market at Powell, the Baldwin Hotel, located right here. We showed a chronology here of the Baldwin Hotel. Uh, this was two years after opening in 1878. This shows uh, during the 1890s, the, the wood sidewalk down Market Street in front of the Baldwin Hotel. Uh, here's a photograph that shows the Baldwin Hotel being destroyed by fire on November 23rd, 1898. Here's the site uh, after the fire. Uh, here is the flood building being constructed in 1904 on the same site. As we know it now, this is the flood building. And here is the uh, Powell Street and Market intersection. If you go down there now, this is actually a Gap store. Again, the user comes back and is able to, to click on any of these intersections within the Market Street corridor. Another way of showing how photographs in the collection are grouped together and presented. Once the database is built and all these photographs are actually digitized, uh, you can search these through a massive database and pull together your own presentation. The next collection that we highlight is the Gay and Lesbian Collection. There are four uh, menu options within this presentation. Uh, here is a collection that is very new to us. Uh, the Gay and Lesbian uh, Research Center will be in the new main library when it opens. These are collections that have been given to us uh, to take care of and to present as part of the history of the gay and lesbian community in San Francisco. Uh, this is a collection that we call the Barbara Greer. Donna McBride pulp paperback collection. Uh, it is a collection of pulp paperbacks uh, related to gay and lesbian issues. We have a gallery option, what it's called in multimedia lingo, uh, that allows us to see these paperbacks, the front cover. A researcher could then flip through this database, select a topic, and the screen will actually display the front and back cover. Ultimately, we could 
actually uh, digitize every page so that you could read this online if you wished. But this would allow the user to say, I'd like to look at this, go to the research center and actually touch and feel that copy. The other part of the collection, uh, it was in, within the collection we have letters. This is a uh, gallery option featuring uh, letters written by Harvey Milk uh, to Joe Campbell. Uh, and we were able to use this technology uh, for the researcher to actually look at the envelope from the Western Union telegram that was sent. Uh, you can actually view the letter with a typed uh, op actually text to the right side with the actual uh, telegraph on the left. Or we can actually view the letter and have it read to Joe us. Joe Frank Campbell, 444 Central Park West, apartment 14G, New York. Again, the option is to pause the letter at any time or continue. And in this presentation, what we've done is after the reader reads the, the uh, front copy of the telegram, the telegram is flipped so that we can see the response from Mr. Campbell to Harvey Milk. Regards to all the boys, Harvey received letters and telegram. Noting that uh, Mr. Campbell wrote the, uh, the response on the back, and you can see where the Western Union representative actually counted the, the words. Please don't be depressed. I worry about you very much. Now this actual piece of the collection can be uh, put away and preserved, uh, but still is accessible to those who would like to look at it. Another part of the collection is uh, Mr. Peter Adair donated uh, his works from Word is Out. Uh, what we try to do here is identify uh, interviews in the collection uh, that Mr. Adair did prior to producing and editing the, the final version of Word is Out. He used this to go back and decide who would be in the, the final work. And because of the, the uh, importance to the community, we've identified uh, four of, of the interviews that uh, did not make the final version, or in some cases may have, uh, so the researcher can go back and look at those. Clicking on the picture. Well, I just, well, I just feel naturally comfortable in it. And it isn't, you know, that's part of the natural flow of my confidence. I guess this I, I video footage was uh, taken from the collection and through a cooperative for the Bay Area Video Coalition was cleaned and reformatted so that we could digitize it. Again, you may pause this at any time. Uh, on the right-hand side, we have a biography of Teddy Matthews. And men on the street you get attacked and stuff, which was what would happen when men would discover that I, I was a man and not a woman. And so out of fear, I tried to pass for a woman. Again, highlighting in this presentation that if this were a traditional uh, video, we would have one VCR with one TV and probably one copy of this. Now we can put this across the network and hundreds of people can see the same image at the same time. We also always take an opportunity to tell people more about the collections uh, and this is a, a way that we can. We actually can give information about the scope of the Gay Lesbian Center, uh, the access to the, the center, where the funding is, is coming from to support it, uh, where you make uh, contributions or donations, and a little more about the collections that are thus far making up this collection. In the current main library, uh, when it opened, there was the ability for the user to come in and identify a piece of sheet music, go to a music room, and actually have a piano where they could play the music. In the new main library, we'll have the ability to select electronically a piece of music from the Dorothy Starr collection. Uh, we have an introduction and bio of Dorothy Starr, who she was, and her contribution to San Francisco. We also have a gallery approach to some of the selections that our archivists have identified uh, from that collection. The user could flip through identifying a piece of sheet music, pressing on that sheet music, 
and having that music performed. As you can see, uh, we can follow along with the performance. and eventually the user would be able to print this out. Also highlighted on this, this screen are credits for the performers. The performers that put this together are uh, staff and uh, local talent, as well as the, we have index uh, information about the collection. Surprisingly enough, people will come in and say, I remember as a child playing the piano and there was a picture of Judy Garland on the cover. Uh, I don't know the name of it, can you tell me if you have it? Uh, through this type of, uh, of indexing, we're able to actually tell you who's on the cover of the music and actually find or try to find uh, the piece you're looking for. We also can flip onto the cover, uh, see any notes that may have been written on the cover, find out who wrote it, who composed, uh, and the actual, in this case, we can see the original price of this piece of sheet music. By pressing the back key, we're able to go backwards through the, the gallery presentation. Exiting the Dorothy Starr presentation of the multimedia workstation, uh, we wanted to highlight branch information about the San Francisco Public Library. Uh, in this presentation, you have an example of how we could use multimedia uh, to highlight events that may be occurring uh, during that month here at the library. For example, we can see the exhibition calendar, adult programs, children's programs, teens, uh, lap sit schedules. We also, through a gallery option, allow you to have a picture of the actual branch that you might be interested in finding out some information about that one. For example, if you wanted to find out about the Golden Gate Valley branch, uh, we give you their address, their hours. Eventually we'll be able to give you more history about the branch, the collections, uh, and other information that would be pertinent to the branch system. Pressing the next allows you to flip through uh, this photograph collection of the branches. As I mentioned earlier, one of the features of the multimedia workstation will be the ability to go into the online card catalog. This allows us to do searching of all of the uh, books, videotapes, other media that we have in the library. Uh, it also allows you to search and it will be cross-referenced over to the multimedia workstation. And the last feature on uh, the multimedia presentation allows us to provide credits uh, for our partners as well as the staff members that participated in this prototype. The prototype of the San Francisco Multimedia Workstation uh, is available in the San Francisco History Room of the Main Library. Uh, it's available during hours of operation for the San Francisco History Room. Uh, we encourage our patrons to, to come up, look at it, use it. Uh, we're encouraging and asking for feedback on how we can further develop this technology. Uh, and we will be making changes to the prototype. Uh, other collections will appear in this presentation, as well as uh, new formats and a change in the product. As the collection and the database grows, some of our search methods will change. Uh, but it is a step towards using this technology to present this type of information. Thank you very much. Want to learn how to read? Want to help someone else learn to read? Contact Project Read of the San Francisco Public Library at 557-4388. Project Read is an adult literacy program that provides volunteer one-to-one -one tutoring for adult learners. Project READ's support of tutors and students includes tutor orientation and training, continuing education workshops for tutors and students, reading diagnostics for students, 
family programs, and referrals to classroom instruction at community college centers and to other agencies in the community. There are many ways you can help adults achieve their personal reading goals. Call Project Read to find out how. Learn to read or be a reading tutor. Phone 557-4388. And this month, there's another way you can help Project Read. On Saturday, September 10th, join their Bridge to Knowledge Walkathon. The three mile walk starts at the Marina Green at the foot of Fillmore Street and ends at the main library. Festivities will include t shirts, refreshments, prizes, and celebrities. For entry forms or information, call Project Read at 557 4388. The San Francisco Public Library's Services for the Deaf and Hearing Impaired are located on the second floor of the main library in the Civic Center. Staffed with personnel fluent in American Sign Language, the Services for the Deaf and Hearing Impaired contain numerous resources for and about the deaf and hearing impaired. Deaf services may be reached via TTD at phone number 557-4433 or voice phone at 557-4434. Hours of operation are Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday from 12 noon to 6 p.m. and Tuesdays from noon to 9 p.m. The 22nd Annual Hand Book Binders of California Members Exhibition will be held in the South Hall of the San Francisco Main Library from September 3rd through October 31st. An opening reception will take place on September 6th from 6.30 to 8.30. The Hand Bookbinders of California is made up of both professional and highly accomplished amateur binders. The exhibition will feature the work of design binders, fine binders, edition binders, conservators, and book artists. The exhibition and opening reception are free and open to the public. That's the Hand Bookbinders 22nd Annual Exhibition in the Main Library. Rainer Biela, a professional photographer and world traveler, will present a travelogue slideshow on cathedrals and chateaus of Western Europe at the Sunset Branch Library on Wednesday, September 14th at 7 p.m. That's the Sunset Branch at 1305 18th Avenue at Irving. Also at the Sunset Branch this month, a book discussion group. Participants will discuss Kazuo Ishiguro's Remains of the Day. That's on Wednesday, September 21st at 7 p.m. at the Sunset Branch Library. And one more branch will be joining the book discussion groups this month. The Bernal Heights Branch Library will discuss Turn of the Screw by Henry James on Thursday, September 29th at 4 p.m. That's the Bernal Heights branch at 500 Cortland Avenue, near Moultrie. Finally, the Noe Valley Sally Brunn branch begins their new book discussion group with The Orange Tree by Carlos Fuentes. They'll be meeting on Wednesday, September 28th at 7.30 p.m. That's the Noe Valley Sally Brunn branch library at 451 Jersey Street, near Castro. Welcome to City Watch, San Francisco's new government access television channel. Hi, I'm Supervisor Sue Bierman. City Watch was created to give you greater access to the services of city departments, agencies, boards, commissions, and the like. With this channel, the city can use television to encourage participation in government services and decision making. In the coming months, look for Gavel to Gavel coverage of public meetings and other programming of interest to all San Franciscans. Thank you for watching. The San Francisco Public Library Commission will be holding a series of public hearings throughout the month of September. One meeting will be held at each branch library and at the main library. The purpose of the meetings is to discuss public preferences for library open hours and services. 
On June 7, 1994, San Francisco voters approved an amendment to the city charter to establish a special fund for the library, known as the Library Preservation Fund, which will be in effect for 15 years. The charter amendment mandates that the total annual average service hours of the library system be at least 1,028 hours per week for the next five years, effective no later than January 1, 1995. The wording of the amendment also requires that public hearings be held at each branch library and at the main library no later than November 1, 1994, and that at the hearings the results of a survey of users' preferences as to the facility's operating hours be made available to the public. The Charter Amendment also specifies that increasing library hours throughout the system and acquiring books and materials will receive priority in expending fund monies. The schedule for public hearings is as follows. On Thursday, September 1st, at 7 p.m., the Library Commission will be holding public hearings at the Visitation Valley Branch and at the Eureka Valley Harvey Milk Branch. On Thursday, September 8th, at 5 p.m., the hearing will be at the Main Library in the Civic Center and at 7 p.m. at the Marina Branch. On Monday, September 12th, at 7 p.m., at the Excelsior Branch. On Tuesday, September 13th, at 6 p.m. at the Ingleside Branch and at 7 p.m. at the Noe Valley Branch. On Saturday, September 17th, at 3 in the afternoon, at the Anza Branch and at the Bayview Anna E. Wadden Branch. On Monday, September 19th, at 7 p.m. at the Golden Gate Valley Branch. On Tuesday, September 20th, at 6 p.m. at the Ocean View Branch and at 7 p.m. at the Sunset Branch. On Thursday, September 22nd, at 7 p.m. at the Ortega Branch and at 7 p.m. at the Mission Branch. On Saturday, September 24th, at 3 p.m. at the Potrero Branch, also at 3 p.m. at the Western Edition Branch. On Monday, September 26, at 7 p.m. at the Presidio branch and at 6 p.m. at the Chinatown branch. On Tuesday, September 27, 7 p.m. at the West Portal branch and 7 p.m. at the Merced branch. On Wednesday, September 28, 7 p.m. at the Portola branch, which is temporarily closed. A location will be announced. And finally, on Thursday, September 29th, 7 p.m. at the Richmond branch and at the North Beach branch. For more information about the Library Commission public hearings, please call area code 415-557-4277. The Main Library offers a free orientation to the San Francisco Public Library System and the new online public access catalog every first Saturday of the month. The sessions run for an hour and provide a basic introduction to the library and its collections. Library orientations on the first Saturday of the month begin at 2 p.m. and take place in the Lurie Room of the Main Library. Times and schedules may change. Call 557 4400 for more information. On Wednesday, September 21st at 7 p.m., the Noe Valley Sally Brunn Branch Library presents three films on women artists. Films include Love It Like a Fool, The Work and Life of Malvina Reynolds.
Also showing will be World of Light, a portrait of May Sarton. The form in my life is to keep my center strong and not dispersed. And that's what it's all about. It's this very rigid schedule that I follow, three hours in the morning, a walk with the dog, a rest, then a different sort of mental activity or gardening in the afternoon and early to bed. Come on, Tana. Come on, Diggle Wuggle. There you go. But I'm at my desk from three to four hours every day. And I try to keep that very much, you know, that sacred time, sort of, because it's the time when I have energy. It's the morning time. So it has to be the morning before one's mind gets all cluttered up, when the door to the subconscious is still open when you first wake up. I think that's the creative time for me. Because you want, you see, that primary intensity. This is what my life is all about, is creating a frame in which I can have that primary intensity for three hours a day. And you'll see Quilts in Women's Lives, Six Portraits. I thought a lot about quilting and why people are so passionate about it. My stomach just turned flip-flops when I saw this quilt. I couldn't believe that anyone would put this kind of work in a quilt. That's three films on women artists. On Wednesday, September 21st at 7 p.m. The World of Light, a portrait of Mae Sarton. Love It Like a Fool, the work and life of Malvina Reynolds. And Quilts in Women's Lives all at the Noe Valley Sally Brunn branch at 451 Jersey Street. The San Francisco Public Library Commission meets on the first Tuesday of every month at 5.30 p.m. in the Lurie Room of the Main Library. The Finance Committee of the Library Commission meets the third Tuesday of the month at 4 p.m. The Building and Facilities Committee meets the third Wednesday of the month at 3 p.m and the Planning Committee meets the third Wednesday of the month at 4 p.m. All San Francisco Public Library Commission meetings take place in the Lurie Room of the Main Library and are open to the public. For more information, phone 557-4233. Stay tuned now for the September Calendar of Events for Children. Starting at the North Beach Branch on September 20th, a film program for children three to five years old, featuring Harold and the Purple Crayon, The Mole and the Lollipop, and Log Driver's Waltz. Those films will all be showing at 10 a.m., 10.30 a.m., 11 a.m., and again at 3 p.m. And at 3.45 in the afternoon, the North Beach Branch will have a film program for six-year-olds and over, with Mr. Gimme and Alexander, who used to be rich last Sunday. Also on September 20th, the Ingleside branch will be having a preschool story time for three to five-year-olds at 10.15 a.m. Then on September 27th, they'll be having an after-school crafts program for six-year-olds and over at 3.30 p.m. Also on September 20th, at the Marina branch, They'll be showing preschool videos for three to five-year-olds at 10.30 in the morning, featuring Tales of Beatrix Potter. Or on September 20th, you can go to the Sunset Branch Library for a preschool film program for three to five-year-olds at 10.30 a.m., 11.15 a.m., and again at 1.30 p.m. On September 21st at 7 p.m., the Sunset Branch will be having a story time for three-year-olds and over at 10 a.m. and again at 10.45 a.m. And on September 21st, you can go to the Visitation Valley Branch for a story time program for three-year-olds and over at 10 a.m. and 10.45 a.m. On September 28th at the Visitation Valley Branch, They'll be showing videos for three-year-olds and over at 10 a.m. and 10.45 a.m. Then at 3.30 in the afternoon, 
They'll be having a crafts program for six-year-olds and over. And on September 28th at 7 p.m., the Richmond branch presents American Sign Language Workshop for Families, featuring hand play with Kimberly Goza. On September 22nd, come to the Ocean View branch at 10.30 a.m. for a story time program for three-year-olds and over, or at 3.30 p.m. for a crafts program for six-year-olds and over. The main library will be having a film program on September 21st for three to five-year-olds at 10 a.m. and again at 10.45 a.m. And you can come again the next day, September 22nd, also a film program for three to five-year-olds, 10 a.m. and 10.45 a.m. That's the September Calendar of Events for Children at the San Francisco Public Libraries. But stick around, there's more. Every Friday from 3 to 6 p.m., the Main Library Children's Department hosts the Chess Club for children of all ages. International, Chinese, Vietnamese, Japanese, and Korean chess are offered, as well as Go and Scrabble. That's the Chess Club in the Main Children's Department at the Main Library every Friday at 3 p.m. Check out the library's programs for infants and toddlers. In the children's room of the main library, come for a lap sit at 10.30 a.m. on Saturdays. The Anza Branch, Wednesdays at 7.15 p.m. Chinatown Branch, call for dates, Saturdays at 10 a.m. Merced Branch, Tuesdays at 10 a.m. In the Mission, Saturdays at 11 a.m. Noe Valley, Sally Brun Branch, Wednesday evenings at 7. In North Beach, Tuesdays at 10.15 a.m., except for the third Tuesday of the month. In the Parkside, Tuesdays at 10 a.m. Potrero Branch, Thursdays at 1.30 p.m. Richmond Branch, Saturdays at 10.30 a.m., call for dates. The Sunset Branch asks for you to call for the schedule for Lapsit. West Portal, 10.30 a.m. on Saturdays and Western Edition, 10.30 a.m. on Saturdays. That's the Lapsit Program, stories, songs, and rhymes for infants and toddlers. When it's time to decide what to do with your life, knowledge is power, use it. A child psychiatrist. A fashion designer. A police officer. A nurse. Cybernetics engineer. Fireman. Legal secretary. An astronaut. The library has all you need to get you where you want to be at the library. Knowledge, power, use it. I just want to be myself, you know. The library, knowledge, power, use it. Hi, I'm Susan Harlow, and I'm a middle school outreach librarian for San Francisco Public Library. And I'm here in the teen corner at the main library, which is down by Civic Center. When we have our new main library built in 1996, this teen corner will become a teen center. It will be very expanded. We'll have tables for teens to sit at and do your homework. We'll have magazines. We'll have tapes, books. And speaking of books, there's some we have right now at the main library and at other public libraries that might be of interest to you. This is How to Draw Comics the Marvel Way by Stan Lee. And Stan Lee is the creator of Spider-Man. If you're interested in comics and drawing and the Marvel style, you'd be interested in this one. He shows you step by step what it's like to draw action figures, to draw superheroes and grotesque creatures. This is How to Draw Comics the Marvel Way by Stan Lee. Another book that might be of interest is the new Teenage Body book. This is a revised version of an older title and it answers hundreds and hundreds of questions you might have about becoming a teenager and just what is it that's happening to your body. This is the new Teenage Body book. There's some fiction titles that I'd like to show you too. This one is Sweet Whispers Brother Rush by Virginia Hamilton. This is the story of a young girl named Teresa. They call her Tree. Now Teresa's 15 years old and she's got a powerful lot of responsibility. 
She's responsible for all the cooking at home, all the cleaning at home. She has to take care of her older brother. Something's a little wrong with him. Dabney, his name is. Something's a little off. They don't quite know what it is. Teresa's mother is never home because she works around the clock as a live-in nurse. So Tree has a lot to do. One day she's coming home from school and she sees sitting over on the stoop a guy she'd never seen before in her neighborhood. He looks really sharp. He's wearing these old-timey clothes. He looks good, though. And she wonders, who is he? But she forgets about it when she gets home because she has so much to do to take care of her brother, take care of the house, do her homework. Now, there's a little room that Teresa has made for herself. It's a closet. And she's turned it into a place where she can just go and be alone. And one day after school, she gets home and she opens the closet door. And when she goes in, she sees sitting not just on the table, but through the table, the same guy that she had seen down the street, the guy with the old-timey clothes. And he's holding up a little mirror. And Teresa goes and looks in the mirror and gets pulled through it into her own past. And she starts finding out things about herself, why her brother is the way he is, and who is this young man who sits through her table holding up the mirror time after time. This is Sweet Whisper's Brother Rush. If this book sounds interesting to you, or if you've already read it and liked it, then you will certainly like this title, which is Coffee Will Make You Black by April Sinclair. This is a fairly new book. It came out this spring, and it's by a woman who lives in Oakland. April Sinclair is a local writer. It's the story of Stevie. She's a young woman growing up on the south side of Chicago between 65 and 1967. She and her friends worry about things like straightening their hair or bleaching their skin, and they have a saying that coffee will make you black. This book starts out with Stevie in the sixth grade, and she starts finding out about boys and about girls. She has her first fight with another girl over a boy. But as the years go by in this book, and we come up to 1967 and then 1968, and the assassination of Dr. Martin Luther King, the people that Stevie is with no longer think so much about straightening their hair and bleaching their skin. They start thinking about other things and about what it is to be an African-American woman growing up on the south side of Chicago. This is Coffee Will Make You Black by April Sinclair. Besides books and magazines at the library, we have programs for teens, too. This fall, we'll be having a lot of programs, especially for middle schoolers. We'll have two of our popular murder mystery at the library programs again. We'll have one at the Sunset Branch and one at the North Beach Branch, and that will be in October. We'll also be having some homework skills programs, as well as Word for Word Performing Arts Company. So tune in again to Channel 54 at the Public Library and find out more about these programs as they come up this fall. Thank you. Don't be no square, don't be no chump, don't make this earth a garbage dump. The planet's green, there's no more funk, there's no more room for no more junk. <laughs> buy stuff that's recycled, recycle the stuff you buy, take it back. Dial a Story is a telephone service offering poems, rhymes, riddles, songs, and stories for children. Presented by the Office of Children's Services of the San Francisco Public Library, Dial a Story is offered in three languages, English, Spanish, and Cantonese. For English stories, dial 626-6516. For Spanish stories, dial 552-0535. And for Cantonese stories, dial 552-0534. Now here's a sampling of some Dial-A-Story fun. Hello, thank you for calling Dial-A-Story, presented by Children's Services, San Francisco Public Library. Our story today is The Bed Just So, from the book by Jean Hardendorf. Once upon a time, there was a tailor who fell asleep over his work every day. He was sleepy all day long because he could not get any sleep at night. Every night when he began to fall asleep, someone or something pulled the covers off his bed. And all night long, the tailor thought he heard someone or something grumbling and complaining and stomping around. This can't go on, the tailor said, and he went to see the wise woman. I must be witched, he told her. 
No, the wise woman said, if you were witched, your feet would be on backwards and your hair would be growing upside down. No, your trouble is that a hudgen has come to stay with you. A hudgen, said the tailor, what should I do? Make a bed for him, the wise woman said. Then he will leave your bed alone. So the tailor bought a bed for the hudgen. It was a big, high bed made out of oak wood. Now, said the tailor, y you have your bed and I have mine. Let's both have a good night's sleep. But as soon as the tailor began to fall asleep, he heard a voice grumbling and complaining. Too high and too hard. Too high and too hard. The next night, the tailor made a low bed out of fern and feathers. But as soon as he began to fall asleep, a voice woke him up, grumbling and complaining. Too soft and too tickly. Too soft and too tickly. Every day, the tailor tried a new bed for the hudgen, and every night the voice woke him up, grumbling and complaining. When the tailor made a bed in the cupboard, the voice said, too dark and too stuffy, too dark and too stuffy. Next, he tried a hammock, but the voice said, too long and too loose, too long and too loose. The tailor built a cradle, and the voice complained, too teeter and too totter, too teeter and too totter. That poor tailor could not find a bed to please the hudgen. I will never get a good night's sleep, he thought. He was very, very tired. But one night he cracked open a walnut to eat after dinner. He looked at the half walnut shell and it looked to him like a tiny bed. Why not, the tailor thought, I've tried everything else. So he lined the walnut shell with cotton and peach down. He put a maple leaf on for a cover and put it on the window sill. Soon he heard a happy humming sound. The tailor looked into the walnut shell and there he saw a small dot, no bigger than a mustard seed. Oh, that must be the hudgen, said the tailor. He shut his eyes tight to listen and he heard a contented little voice saying, just so. Just so. I like a bed made just so. And at last, the tailor got a good night's sleep. That's all there is. There isn't any more. The Friends of the Library annual literary series at the Herbst Theater is set to begin September 12th and will continue through next April. Here's some information about the first two performances in the series. On Monday, September 12th, Sarah Lawrence Lightfoot, author of Bomb in Gilead, The Good High School, and I've Known Rivers, will be in conversation with Dr. Philip Zimbardo, a professor of psychology at Stanford University and host of the PBS TV series, Discovering Psychology. Then, on Friday, September 23rd, Ned Roram, composer and author of Essays and Criticism, for the New York Times, Saturday Review, and others, and of Knowing When to Stop. Talks with Wayne Kostenbaum, author and associate professor at Yale University. Upcoming guests will also include Tom Robbins, Joseph Heller, Lauren Bacall, Roz Chast, and others. Some events are sold out, but still available for series ticket purchasers. Call 415-392 4400 for further ticket information. And pick up a print copy of At the Public Library for a complete schedule of the series. Or for another literary event, be sure to come to the main library on September 22nd when we'll be presenting international best selling author Sidney Sheldon. He'll be reading from his latest work, Nothing Lasts Forever in the Lurie Room of the San Francisco Main Library on Thursday, September 22nd at 4 p.m. Following his reading, Mr. Sheldon will sign copies of his book as a benefit to the library. City guides are volunteers who enjoy the city and its stories. Let them share their knowledge and enthusiasm with you on free walking tours of various San Francisco locations. Call. 557-4266 for more information on free public tours of San Francisco. 
You too can be a friend, a friend of the San Francisco Public Library. Join us. For more information, phone the Friends of the San Francisco Public Library at 557-4257. We'd like to hear what you think of At the Public Library. Please send your comments to San Francisco Public Library, Media Production Services, Civic Center, San Francisco, California, 94102. You've been watching At the Public Library here on cable channel 54, City Watch. At the Public Library features news and information about the San Francisco Public Library system. And for a printed copy of some of the information in this program, pick up a copy of At the Public Library at your branch or at the main library. Tune in next time for more At the Public Library, and thanks for watching.